Right, hi. No time for a proper intro this week, unfortunately, as it's been a slightly eventful one as far as tech stuff goes. So hello to regular viewers. Big love for joining me for yet another massive heap of b****. Casually, half arsedly dressed up as a weekly tech news show. And to any new viewers, well, Christ, I'm just sorry for everything you're about to witness. Tech Spurt Weekly! So, deep breath, let's begin. The big tech launch of the week came courtesy of Sony Mobile, who finally pulled back the curtain on its fresh new Xperia 5 Mark II smartphone. A more compact version of the Xperia 1 Mark II flagship, which strips out just a couple of those super premium features like the 4K resolution screen and the wireless charging in exchange for a pleasing hand feel, for now, for now, plus a less hefty price tag of 799 quid. You've got a much bigger 4000 mAh battery compared with the previous generation, even though the Xperia 5 Mark II is a mite slimmer at 8mm. That camera tech is directly ported from the flagship with Sony's 20 frames per second burst shot, you got Photo Pro, you got Cinema Pro, and a fresh new 120 frames per second slow motion mode with 4K HDR support. And gamers are also very well catered for with the native 120Hz refresh rate on that new display, with software smarts apparently boosting that to an emulated 240Hz on demand. Now I've banged on about all that and more in my full Xperia 5 Mark II launch video, it's the full skiddy, it went live yesterday so crack open a brew and check out that for all you need to know. And also this week, oh my god, I think my kidneys just exploded in utter shock because Techspert Weekly regulars Motorola launched not just one but two new smartphones right here in Blighty. Swear I'm gonna die of a lack of sleep with all these goddamn Motos. The Moto G9 Plus is finally a thing here after the soft launch of the G9 Player a couple of weeks back and it is an absolute f monster at 6.8 inches. Inside that beast of a plastic chassis you'll find a 5000 milliamp battery just like the G9 Play, while the new Plus also boasts Full HD Plus HDR visuals, a 64 megapixel primary camera and Qualcomm's respectable Snapdragon 730G chipset as found in the Pixel phone. Sadly not the fresh new 732G as was slapped inside of the Poco X3 NFC. A Motorola also spaffed out a new super budget E-series model as well, the Moto E7 Plus. This one is 6.5 inch effort with an HD plus display, 48 megapixel main shooter and once again a 5000 milliamp battery. And this one's powered by the Snapdragon 460 which hopefully should be absolutely decent for everyday shenanigans. Will I be reviewing the new phones? Sure, why the f*** not? I'm more than happy with just occasional fleeting glances on my family and not really doing anything besides working and occasionally passing out face first into my laptop keyboard. And also this week, besides all the launch guff, there was also huge news as Nvidia looks set to purchase chipmaker ARM in a deal set to be worth a reported $40 billion. Now ARM of course are the dudes who design all of the chips basically found in pretty much any mobile device going and they are the jewel in the UK's tech crown even though they're technically owned by a Japanese technology investment firm these days called SoftBank. So this move by Nvidia is a bit of a hot pie to say the least. In fact it's so hot it won't just burn your tongue it'll set your f head ablaze. Now there's lots of issues here but the biggest potential problem is that ARM offers its services to a huge variety of mobile manufacturers including the likes of Apple for instance who use the ARM chips in their iPhones, their iPads and are even planning on using them in their fresh new MacBooks. And let me tell you Nvidia and Apple get on about as well as a vegan tree hugger and a sack full of Big Macs. So yeah shit is about to get very interesting. Of course Nvidia CEO Jason Wang tried to calm everyone down a little bit. He said that the ARM HQ will remain here in the UK and then he plans to play nicely with all of ARM's current clients, but of course only time will really tell. And that was the bulk of the mobile tech news, but then of course also Sony announced the PS5 pricing at long last on Wednesday. It's going to start from 359 quid here in the UK if you don't need that optical drive, which is a pretty damn good price. The Oculus Quest version 2 launched as well, which I'm very excited about because I love the original Quest, fantastic device, and just 300 quid as well, so hopefully a lot more people will be able to get on board with that VR. And I think that's basically it for the big news. Uh, anything else? Um, nothing really interesting. Though I guess Apple launched some new iPads and watches and shit like that. Yawn. So with that concluded, it's now time for the part of the show that gives fully grown human adults absolutely wicked night terrors. It's viewer comments. Woo woo. Viewer comments. Woo. Now let's kick off with Daniel who says, uh, you're looking a little less pale this week, spending too much time under the studio lights. I love that that's your assumption rather than actually going outside into the sunshine, uh, but you're right. I've actually just been using a bit of rouge to try and pretty myself up a bit for you lovely folk. Uh, Alistair says, good update. Uncle Spurt might have to be called Captain Slackbladder now though. 
uh, yeah, uh, tell me about it, mate. <laughs> you know, you're getting old when you have to get up about four or five times in the middle of the night just to take a piss. I'm also thinking of just saying screw it and just bunging on an adult diaper every night instead, or maybe just attaching a hose to myself and bunging the other end straight into the toilet. Uh, a brief break now, if you will, uh, for an actual serious question, but don't worry, I'll get back to the knob jokes and toilet humour in a second. Uh, Graham says, I'm desperate for a 5G phone, dual SIM, with dedicated memory cards, sub 320 quid. The Realme 6 seems to be an option, but the Redmi 10X Pro 5G looks great too. Well, the Realme 6 doesn't have 5G. I'm assuming you mean the Realme X50 5G, which costs around 300 quid. That does come with 5G. Pretty sure it's dual SIM, although let me just double check. Nah, it's dual SIM, but there's no micro SD memory card support on the Realme X50. Uh, but Xiaomi is set to be launching a new 5G smartphone, which is going to be under £300 uh, in just like a week or two. Uh, so stay tuned for more on that. That could be an absolute blinder. Uh, and now, of course, as usual, we've got a couple of decidedly sketchy nominations for our unnervingly regular new segment, Which Crap Celebrity Do I Look Like This Week? Which Crap Celebrity Do I Look Like This Week? Lee says, Do you know you look like Bert from The Muppets? Uh, yes, the eyebrows and the pointy head, right? Yeah, yeah, no worries, I, I yeah. <laughs> and Pika says, you look like a Lego thief. Excellent, love it. Have you guys actually run out of bold Z-list actors to, uh, to compare with now? Now we're on to Muppets and little plastic yellow figurines. Uh, next up, Jonathan says, slightly off topic, but was wondering if you're planning on writing any more books. <laughs> I was. I was actually halfway through a novel, believe it or not, um, and then I made the slightly dubious decision to procreate. Uh, so now the only thing I really have time to write is just messages of despair on the wall in my own feces. But it's very, very kind of you to ask. And if you've actually read any of my books, then thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, for anyone who isn't aware, I have written a shitload of books back in the day. Uh, they're all available on the Amazon Kindle store. And some of them aren't entirely shit. Uh, next up, Tim says, love the channel. A request here from a disabled dude whose excessive phone use destroys OLED screens. Please give us a full on comment about the performance or lack thereof. I saw one review say it was definitely mid range, which has got me a bit spooked. So I'm not sure exactly which phone you mean. I'm assuming from the specs that you've listed that you're talking about either the Pixel 4a or the OnePlus Nord. Uh, in which case, the performance is absolutely fine on both of those because the Nord has got the, uh, the 765G chipset stuffed inside. Um, so absolutely brilliant for gaming, apps, anything you want to do with it. Very few people would be able to tell the difference between that and an 865 if you just had a quick play with them side by side. As for the Pixel, yeah, it uses the more basic 730G. You got the odd little stammer here and there as you're sort of flicking through. It's not as silky smooth as like the flagship phones, but thanks to the, you know, the nice stock version of Android, the general energy efficiency and everything, you'll get a really nice bit of performance. And again, I had no trouble gaming on the likes of Call of Duty on those top detail settings absolutely fine. Uh, Larry says you're one of the few reviewers who actually bothers to mention the Realme X50. Do you think it will still get recognition at the end of this year with the forthcoming X70 and X70 Pro? I mean that is kind of the problem is that these phones are coming at such a rapid rate that even the really good ones tend to get kind of like pushed aside and forgotten about after just a few months. It's absolutely brain frazzling. And a similar note IJ Smith says uh, I had settled on the Redmi Note 9 Pro as my new handset but now I guess I might as well go for the Poco X3. Well, basically until next week when Xiaomi probably releases an even better smartphone like that 5G one I mentioned. So it's one of those things that's like stick or bust. Should I buy a phone now or should I wait a couple of weeks when something else even better comes along? But then a couple of weeks after that, something better, yada, yada, yada. Until eventually the apocalypse happens and all of this just becomes dust in the wind. There's your happy thought for the day, kiddies. Uh, next up, Patrick says, being relative newcomers to the UK, it will be interesting to see how well the likes of Xiaomi and Realme perform long term, their commitment to after sales care and updates, etc. Uh, yeah, definitely on the after sales care front, um, you know, obviously that's where you've got the advantage of uh, Samsung or Apple or something like that. If you live in a big city, you can just dodge to the high street and there tends to be a store there where you can go in and, you know, speak to an actual human being face to face. But of course, naturally, once you move out of the big cities, go a bit more out into the rest of the country. Certainly here in the UK, you will struggle to find an Apple or a Samsung store. So then it's a mood point anyway. But on the update front, yep, yeah, certainly a couple of years of services, generally the sort of minimum you would kind of hope for and expect. And uh, certainly, Xiaomi, it's got a couple you know, handsets from a couple of years back uh, that it is updating now with MIUI 12, which is great to see. Uh, we yet to see the ColorOS rollout schedule for the likes of the Realmes, of course. Uh, Russ says, or did Motorola not send you a Motorola 5G? Uh, no, no, I get every other Motorola phone, everything apart from the sexy looking one. Damn you, Motorola! Uh, Ali says, my favourite source of tech updates and fun jingles. Uh, probably time to add more of those, probably an anime and a food segment. Yeah, I mean, food I could definitely get behind. I could do like a, a best of the UK Brexit special. Food Roundup could review Scotch eggs, uh, 
pork scratchings, pickled onions, all the good stuff, uh, everything apart from whelks. F whelks. Literally looks like something that floated out of a whale's nose. Went to the coast last weekend and saw people chowing down on massive frickin' cartons full of those. Ugh. I'm starting to run out of time so I'll just do a couple more quickly. Uh, JLC says, hello, could you do a Techspert's working week vlog so we can see what you do outside of tech unboxings and review videos? Uh, sorry to break it to you JLC but it wouldn't be a very exciting vlog. I spend certainly recently bulk of my time doing the channel stuff. Uh, in my breaks in between I tend to just basically face plant the sofa and watch a bit of Netflix. Cobra Kai is what I'm on at the moment. That is my joint. God damn that is a good show. I wasn't even a really a massive a fan of the original movie or anything. It was good. It wasn't like mind blown or anything, but the show absolutely adore. It's over on Netflix, first two seasons. Third season is apparently on its way. Uh, on the soundtrack. Oh, so good. I'm all about that 80s rock. You can take your Justin Bieber's and your Taylor Swift's and you can shove them right up your ass. Uh, so, absolutely last one for this week, unfortunately. Uh, Papant says, Hey man, I like your channel, but this video isn't tech review, but stupidity. Lol. Uh, yeah. I mean, you basically summed up this show better than I ever could. So that's it for the viewer comments. Thank you very much to everyone who commented. Apologies again if I didn't get to yours this week. Please do leave your thoughts down below. We'll try and smash through as many of those next week. And speaking of next week, next week I can't even speak anymore. Uh, it's definitely time to hook up the caffeine drip and order in a couple gallon bottles of whiskey because it's going to be another busy one. As a Tuesday, Jabra is unveiling its new Elite earbuds, which will be the successors to the excellent Jabra Elite 75T. So fingers crossed some really nice buds coming out of that. And that's followed by some hot Nokia action with what should be the relaunch of the Nokia 8.3 5G, which originally launched, of course, back in March, back when everything was slightly different to how it is now. And then, of course, it just buggered off out of existence for six months. Uh, but it'll be very timely if it does pop up again next week, because, of course, the new Bond movie is just around the corner. A good day to die hard. That's great stuff. And then also next week uh, on Wednesday, yet another Samsung Impact event, because they haven't had enough of those in the last couple of months. Uh, that's happened Wednesday afternoon, where we should see a more wallet friendly version of the Galaxy S20 flagship phone, albeit with slightly pared down specs and probably not quite as good camera tech. So that's it for me for another week. Big love to you. Thank you for joining me and actually sticking with it this far as well. And please do join me again next uh, Friday for another heap of this shit. Be rounded up yet another busy week of tech if I haven't topped myself by then. So see you then. Love you lots. Bye.